I came into the world as light so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. Well, the evangelist St. John is telling us that this is how Jesus understands his mission. He came as the light. Of course, light and darkness here are metaphors for truth and falsehood. As the Father's agent of light, however, Jesus has to constantly struggle with the primary agent of darkness. Walang iba kundi si Satanas. Satan who is able to mislead people precisely by posing as an angel of light. No wonder the devil was given the name Lucifer, which literally means the one who brings light. Well, actually, the one who seduces people to believe that what he is bringing is light. You know, the biggest arena in this battle between Christ and Satan in the age of digital technology seems to be the social media. You are engaged in that battle all the time, but each time you engage in social media. I am referring, of course, to the battle between truth and falsehood, between information and disinformation. Well, although the use of social media is a relatively new phenomenon, mass disinformation itself is not a new phenomenon at all. It is as old as humanity. It has come by many different names during earlier times. Noon ang tawag dyan, propaganda or brainwashing or re-education or image building or manipulation. It always has to do with the conditioning of the mind for falsehood rather than for truth. Take note, however, Jesus is not condemning those who remain in darkness. Why? Because they have been seduced by the agents of darkness. Sabi niya, if anyone hears my voice, and he's referring to the truth, and does not observe them, meaning they choose to remain in falsehood, Jesus says, I do not condemn them. I do not condemn them. Remember, the mission of Jesus is precisely to save, not to condemn. He says it very explicitly. I have come not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Do not forget that to save is precisely his mission, to redeem even at the price of his own blood. You know, the name Jesus, which in Hebrew is Yeshua, literally means the Lord saves. It is the nature of the Lord to save. But Jesus also says that those who willfully reject the truth and choose falsehood have, as it were, already chosen their own condemnation. It is not God who condemns us. Sometimes, or many times, we condemn ourselves. The real challenge, therefore, for the Redeemer is how to get people to see the lights. 
how to get people to know the truth. And unfortunately, it is not as simple as telling them, you're wrong and I am right. Or they will only become defensive. Or they may even turn offensive and vicious because that is what happens when people feel that they are being attacked. In the search for truth, people will not always act rationally. Jesus is actually saying something like this in John chapter 3, verse 19. Let me quote him. It says, Light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light. Mas gusto daw ng tao ang kadiliman kaysa sa liwanag. Why? Because their works are evil, sabi niya. And my better understanding of that is they are under the spell of evil. And then he also says, they hate the lights. Namumuhi sila sa liwanag. They do not come to the light so that their works might not be exposed. Diba? Na-mention ko na yan minsan, na yung masasamang loob o yung mga magnanakaw, galit yan sa liwanag. So, kung merong akyat bahay, titingin muna siya kung may nakasinding street lamp or uh, CCTV dun sa lugar na gusto niyang pasukan. So, how would you expect the agents of darkness to favor such principles as or the values of honesty, transparency, or accountability. Wala yan sa vocabulario nila. Evil is like a fungus that thrives in the dark and the secret places. So how would you expect, for example, the trolls to reveal their true identities? Kaya nga, troll eh. Fake yung identity. And they are very, very successful precisely because they are allowed to run myriads of fake accounts in the social media platforms. And many people who are users of social media sometimes don't even know that the people they're interacting with are trolls. You know that these trolls are doomed when they no longer feel any sense of guilt about what they are doing. Lalo na kapag ganito na lang sasabihin nila, trabaho lang yan, walang personalan. No sense of remorse anymore. In this age of mass disinformation through the social media, propaganda can get more quickly amplified than the truth. Mas mabilis mag-viral ang hindi totoo kesa sa totoo. Ewan ko ba? Siguro dahil mas enjoy yung mga marites na makinig sa hindi totoo at magbalita ng hindi totoo. And take note, make no mistake about this. This is not something that only the trolls can do. The evil about trolling is nakakahawa ito. Gagayahin mo sila. Minsan dahil nagagalit ka nga sa kanila, you end up behaving exactly like them. Because their mission precisely is to multiply themselves, to replicate themselves when their hidden voices will be amplified by holders of real account. Kunyari, ikaw, hindi ka troll, pero pinick up mo siya, in-engage mo siya, then katrol ka na. Yung isa, real troll, yung isa, real account holder. Then, nag-multiply siya. Then, they become more successful. 
in seducing other people with their false narratives. Kaya, dapat lang lahat tayo mag-examination of conscience. Ask yourself, kapag tumanggap ka ng video or any piece of information, do you even bother to verify the source before you click the share icon and spread it around? Ay nako, isa sa mga pinakamalaking nakapagkakasala ngayon ay ang social media. Is it not true that even the most sincere and the most well-intentioned people can also become agents of disinformation? Pag nagkalat ka na ng forwarded na video, or message na hindi totoo, <laughs> kasama ka na sa kasalanan. We cannot wash our hands. We're part of the guilt. You see, we can all become slaves of the agent of darkness, especially when our emotions are overcome by anger or frustration or fear, it can become a thick cloud of darkness that can make even the most rational people act in an irrational way. People can be so convinced about a lie, they will substitute it for the truth. In another passage, you know, Jesus also said, and if the light in you is darkness, how great darkness will be. That's Matthew 6, verse 23. Kasi sometimes, pag masakit yung katotohanan, some people find themselves withdrawing into falsehood na parang nag-withdraw sa comfort zone. Some people can behave like stray rabbit dogs whose nervous system has been attacked by a virus. And that makes them Afraid of the light. Alam nyo ba kapag infected na ng rabies ang aso at uh, talagang ina na yung nervous system niya, magtatago yan sa dilim. Takot yan sa liwanag. If we are to participate at all in the work of redemption of our Lord and Master, Jesus, then... We must learn never to give up, even on people who have been seduced by darkness. Look what he did when they hung him on a cross. He even prayed for them and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Hindi po nila alam ang ginagawa nila. Mga wala sa sarili. Jesus proved His radical love by descending into the hell that people are capable of making of their lives. Isn't that good news? Na kahit mahulog pala tayo sa impyerno, bababaan niya tayo. He doesn't give up. He confronts evil Head on. Cool lang siya. And he gives the agent of darkness one final blow in order to break his spell once and for all and lead the captives back to light.